Your microphone. Still do not clear. Mr. Burn ground. She's not. So we're going to move on to the county attorney matter, City of Sebastian, Graves Brothers Annexation, Board of Governmental Conflict Resolution Act of Resolution. Mr. Reingold. Thank you very much. On August 28th, the City of Sebastian approved an annexation for over 1,100 acres of property, which is located south of County Road 510. Prior to that meeting, the county had expressed concerns relating to the annexation, including impacts pertaining to Laconia Street, impacts on the costs of 82nd Avenue project, and most significantly, how the water and sewer interlocal agreement with the city would govern the development of the property. Uh, with regards to the utility issue, I am concerned about the language contained in an annexation agreement that was approved by the city council. Um, specifically, that annexation agreement states if either the county or the SRID fails to comply with their lawful obligation to provide such services, the owner will be free to seek other alternatives. To the extent not funded by others, the owner shall be responsible for funding, design, permitting, and construction of the infrastructure. Additionally, it states that the infrastructure shall be built to city um, standards. Um, and then finally, um, the services shall be provided by the county or alternative services as set forth herein. Um, I'd, I'd reviewed our interlocal agreement. It appears that this is in violation of several of the provisions of our interlocal agreement, including the provision governing no competing system, provision regarding uh, no third party beneficiary rights, and the provision of the ILA that governs how utilities will be provided. Now, on August 13th, the board had directed the county attorney's office to take any necessary steps to preserve the appellate rights with respects to this annexation. Per that direction, the county attorney's office has drafted the resolution that is contained in your agenda packet, which initiates the conflict resolution process under Florida statutes. Please keep in mind, it was not the goal of county staff or the county attorney's office to rush into the dispute resolution process. Staff and the board had asked the city council to defer taking action so that we could try to resolve the issues that had been expressed by the county before any approval of any annexation. Now that the city council has acted under statutes, the board has until September 27th to initiate the process or relinquish its right to challenge the annexation. Also, please know that I do not look at this process as litigation. In fact, the process was established by the legislature as a mechanism by which it would uh, it's require local governments to settle their differences or at least to attempt to mediate their differences before going to court. I would like to use this as an opportunity to sit down with city staff, just as we did on the fire marshal issue, and try to make sure to see if we can resolve these issues prior to going to court. The county attorney's office therefore recommends that the board approve the proposed resolution I would also recommend that we provide a copy of the resolution to the city of Felsmere. Uh, the city of Felsmere also spoke at that annexation meeting, and I just wanted to make sure we could see if they wanted to participate in the process. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Reingold? There being none at this time, I'll ask if there's anybody from the audience who would like to speak on this issue. Good morning. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Paul Carlisle, City Manager, City of Sebastian, 1225 Main Street. Appreciate the opportunity to address a couple of these issues that the uh, county attorney had brought up. And we agree that there was an issue with that language that we installed in that agreement that may be conflicting with the interlocal agreement with the county. The reason that that language was put specifically in there for was to ensure that the residents of the county and those that had spoken against any septic and well on there would be addressed. We have no issue with um, amending that, that in a local agreement. After the county administrator spoke at the planning and zoning meeting, he indicated the county is willing to serve that area. I spoke to my attorney immediately following that meeting, said, let's amend the agreement. I met with Mr. Reingold in the parking lot after that, agreement, after that meeting, and I said, hey, I'd, I'd be interested in, in amending that agreement. 
And so, you know, I'm not opposed to amending the agreement for the third party water service as long as the county abides by that interlocal agreement that we have with you. That's not an issue for us. We're more than happy to do that. As far as a, the, the second part of the 164 that you have before you today, whether the, the annexation was legal or, or what, what you have, that I'll leave up to the attorneys. But I just want to say, for the record, many of you are on the record, and, and Mr. Brown's on the record in a public meeting, saying they're not opposed to the annexation. So, you know, it just leaves me a little confused, but, you know, we're willing to work with you how we can. And, and so, again, we're willing to, to remove that language for the third party utilities. We'll, we'll work with your staff on that, but we don't, we don't, I'll leave the attorney part to discuss the other section of the 164. Mr. Carlisle, you were at the <coughs> NPO meeting when this was discussed, right? I was. And given the issues that came up at the MPO meeting, how can you be confused that the county wants further discussions on this? There was so much information at that meeting, some of it coming from uh, Sebastian council members that wasn't consistent with other statements made at that meeting, that it would seem, let me finish, that would seem that you, everybody would want to have a discussion. And again, I left that meeting thinking, ah, the best thing we could do, Sebastian and any of our county would actually be a, to have a discussion on these items a number of people in the room, not just county commissioners, as I recall, suggested the meeting just be delayed for a while, the annexation meeting be delayed for a while. That's something we regularly do at the Board of County Commissioners when there's a lack of information or there are outstanding issues which we believe can be resolved reasonably quickly, but Sebastian chose not to delay anything. So I, I just, you know, your statement there confuses me when you know there was something w at this point when a conversation between the parties could go so far to resolving the issue so quickly so that's just my comment to your comment. and if i may address uh, and i'm yes sir you no know, i don't want to debate the, the, the conversation but we felt that those issues were addressed and some of those things were addressed in, in a methodology that was suggested by that board by your board with the annexation agreement you may not agree with the annexation agreement but it was done as a response to the conversations with you all at that meeting we address the, the density issues through our PUD process. We address those issues. It may not be to the satisfaction or to the language that the county would like to have seen, but we feel that our planning staff and working with the, de with, the with the property owner, and again, this isn't developing tomorrow. It's all developing under a PUD. All of those things are addressed during that. So we strive to address the issues that you brought before us. The only issue that remained for us was the, the statement that there was no guarantee for water and sewer. We had an outcry from the Clean Water Coalition from the different entities saying, we want to make sure there's no water and sewer septic systems. We wanted to address that. We wanted to address those concerns. So again, I think that, um, I think that we've addressed those comments that were made um, and, and we hope that you'll move forward in an amicable um, solution to this issue. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Carlisle? Yes, uh, and Mr. Carlisle, thank you for, for being here. And uh, you are right. Uh, many of us have uh, no concern or opposition for the actual uh, annexation. Uh, it's a property rights issue. And it's, it's, it's a choice. And it, it's a choice that was made uh, by the property owner and Sebastian. But um, an and honorable uh, the downside was there was a uh, little lack of communication and uh, a lot of inconsistencies with what was transpiring. Um, in addition, when there was questions, I don't necessarily know if uh, Mr. Brown was uh, treated fairly at the uh, city council meeting. I believe that it was a foregone conclusion and the decision was made and uh, he was more or less preempted from his explanation or discussion. I believe that uh, we can go a lot further with an open line of communication and there would be no concern about having this discussion with the attorney. Uh, because I did have a discussion with Mr. Jeff Bass, uh, which uh, uh, was rather enlightening. Uh, there was a lot of information exchange. Um, some of it was uh, refreshing, uh, but some of that information was inconsistent with what was being brought forward, and it left me uh, thinking, wow, if the old expression, hindsight is twenty twenty, if we had had this discussion prior, if we all had been able to speak about it 
and understand it and the verbiage in the agreement was clear, then perhaps maybe there would not be this sense of acrimony. I believe that it's all resolvable. I believe that uh, we, sh we should be going forward with this discussion. Everybody should be uh, sitting at the table and have a, a clear and concise agreement and understanding so that we can go forward. There is a lot about the discussion on septic and sewer and who's responsible and uh, what's to happen in the future with the next parcels of property and nobody has a crystal ball, uh, but there is anticipation. Um, the likelihood of this happening now instead of the 15 year mark or 20 year mark and uh, what, what the impacts are with the FDOT, uh, with the right of ways, all of that needed to be discussed and uh, uh, on both sides, okay? I, I, everybody's an affected party and everybody should have had an open line of communication <coughs> as opposed to, hey, it's an annexation, it's happening, here's the first read. I remember being at the MPO and um, there was an objection by uh, Commissioner O'Brien and I think the response was, well, it's early on in the discussion by one of the council members. Well, you have two reads in Sebastian, and the first read was done. So it was beyond 50% of the, the discussion. There was only one more meeting, and then that annexation was happening. So it's a matter of, if, is your glass half full or glass ha half empty? Yeah, it, we're halfway there. But the discussion was, was so early on on this that we'll We'll have time to discuss and vet all this out. There was no discussion. And then there was the read and members uh, responded and the discussion was very brief and that three minute time limit happens real quick. So I, I believe that we'll all be better off. The city of Sebastian will be better off. I believe that the property owner will be better off and uh, the, the people of Indian River County will be better off if we all sit down and talk. I'm sorry, is, and I appreciate that. I think that we did have communication. It may not always have been the answers that your staff may have wanted, but we did have that communication. There was communication early with, with the planning staff, but again, you know, we're here to, to, to try to make this move forward as smoothly and, and as effortly as possible. We agree that the, we can amend the annexation agreement specifically for the water and sewer. Um, to mirror what we have in the agreement with Indian River County. So, you know, those are, those are the two issues before you that are, you're going to decide today. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Cole. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I've always had a, a concern about the valuation of the land uh, post annexation. And Paul, I know you and I have discussed this before, but the reality is when you change the land use, regardless of if, you, if you've assigned a zoning to it, you've increased the value of that land. And if you look at it pre-annexation, and it, it's got nothing to do with the property appraiser. What it has to do with is the attorney for the Graves Brothers and the attorney for the Department of Transportation in a arbitration case arguing over the highest and best use of that land. It's got nothing to do with the property appraiser says. When it's land use is ag, the argument is, well, the highest and best use for that property, given the available zonings, would be one residential unit per five acres. And that will have a value. And the, the attorneys can argue if that's 50,000 an acre or 100,000, but they argue that. When you change that land use, and it now has a land use of commercial industrial, it doesn't matter what zoning you, you might put on it in the future, the attorney for the Graves Brothers is going to argue the best and highest use of that land now is a <coughs> industrial park because that's one of the allowable zonings in commercial industrial. And now they're arguing over millions of dollars per acre. So, and I've heard nothing, nothing in, in this whole time period of why this had to be done August 28th. It's my understanding that your August 20th meeting, a representative from Graves Brothers said, 
nothing's going to happen here for eight to ten years. You yourself just said nothing's going to happen soon. So what was the urgency? There was no urgency other than Graves and DOT are about to enter into arbitration over the value of that right-of-way. And that's the only urgency I see in this whole thing. And I find it terrible that the city would change that land use, that they would allow a, a long strip right along 82nd Avenue of commercial industrial land. Mr. Dodd at the MPO said one of their, the city's concerns is, well, we want to have um, a, a job center creation. Well, you don't do that with the strip malls, okay? If you really want to do some type of industrial park or job creation center, you don't make a strip mall along 82nd Avenue. But that's what the city has done. And that's where the right-of-way needs to go. And regardless of what you think, when you change that land use, you've jacked up the value of that land. Well, I that, That's the bottom line. I mean, and those two attorneys are going to argue that best and highest use of that land now. And now it can be an industrial park, because that's going to be an allowable zoning on that land use. And, that, and I just find it terrible what the city of Sebastian did to the taxpayers that it's going to cost more for that right away. I can't speak for the, the property owner. He's here to speak for himself and what his negotiations are with DOT. <coughs> tell you that we have no nexus to make them dedicate that land. We don't, if, if we, you based on our do, attorneys. You it's a voluntary annexation. You can ask what Felsmer did. And I did ask, but here's the, it, that issue was under eminent domain. The city's not going to get thrust into that lawsuit. So that is an issue between the landowner and DOT. I'm, the city, that eminent domain case is our, was, was pending prior to the annexation. Right. What about 510? 510, the right of way was, has been discussed, and there's negotiations with the property owner and the county on that 510 right of way for pond sharing. So that's an issue between the landowner. Right, but the again, that's, doesn't that's when you have the opportunity with the voluntary annexation to say, hey, as, as part of the, the good of coming into the city of Sebastian, we want to have that right of way so we can build the infrastructure that your development's going to create a problem in, in the future. In our, in our development, in our PUD, that language is in ours. As upon development, he has to donate the right of way upon development. For 510? For any roadway. Well, upon, well, upon so, yeah, their internal roads, yeah, they're going to dedicate that because they need them. But what about 510? If their development impacts 510, they'll have to dedicate right away for that. And, and define impact. That's going to be defined by whatever the development is. It's a PUD, what, and the impacts to the traffic studies, what those are. Yeah. Right now, there's no, no traffic impact because it's still ag. No, mm -hmm. it's, it's in commercial industrial. You all change the mm -hmm. land use. Ms. Mr. Chair, if I could add on the, on the right-of-way issue. Again, I think the, the water is the biggest issue, but on the right-of-way, staff had some concerns on the annexation last year of the 67 acre parcel north of 510 we communicated with city staff saying we think you should try and get the right of way that is needed for 510 dedicated that was not uh, done staff county staff didn't didn't raise the issue any further i will say however that uh, that the comp plan amendment for that 67 acre annexation went to to deo at the state and they sent it out to the other state agencies for comment and there was a comment from DOT on July 20th of 2018. Um, now this is DOT's words. Um, it says, this amendment appears to be prompted by the programming of roadway capacity projects. The amendment is located south of the city's southern boundary within a large rural area with limited services and a sparse roadway network. The department recommends that prior to the adoption of the amendment, the city consider the degree to which it will annex future properties and engage in planning activities to determine the extent to which the area can develop in order to assess the infrastructure needs of the development, including an appropriately spaced and connected roadway network. This will position the city to avoid negative consequences associated with urban sprawl and over-reliance on County Road 510 and 82nd Avenue for mobility. So county staff has had some of those concerns. The right-of-way was not obtained uh, as would normal, as, as we would like to have seen for 510, and now we're seeing the same uh, potential dynamic at play here on 82nd Avenue. And I would, and I would, mentioned that the that the planning um, that needs to be done for future annexations is something of great concern on the water and sewer that I'd like to talk about later but I just wanted to to address the the right-of-way issue there Thank Mr. You. chairman 
I think we have someone that can answer where things are at with DOT. Well, let's and finish up with Mr. Carlisle, let him okay. sit down, and then we'll ask if anybody else wants to speak. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Carlisle? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Carlisle, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. You got and we'll ask, is there anybody else from the public who wishes to speak? Name and address the record, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Bass. I thought we were here to talk about water and sewer. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, if you'd have called me back after my ask to meet you, I could have answered a lot of these questions. 82nd Avenue is off the table. It's been condemned. I have not one time ever asked for that right of way to be increased in value. Not one time. I'm parallel to the drainage district's right of way. The drainage district has evaluation issues. They're paying, FDOT is paying the drainage district more than they're paying me. So what you're bringing up is totally false. Well, I let me ask you this. I can see where you're thinking, but it's not true. So the only, let me finish please, sir. The only reason that is being uh, uh, questioned at all between myself and FDOT is because I'm waiting for a joint use pond agreement from the county. And I think I've met with Mr. Brown last week. I think that's finally going to go forward. I talked to Mr. Spierka about that nine months ago and was told it was okay. So we've been waiting for that. This has not been a ploy to drive up the land. You got 10 acres there. I'm going to not going to let 10 acres in interfere with 1,000 acres. It has not been a push on my part to raise this price. Talk to their appraiser. I haven't even done an appraisal. They've done their own appraisals. Matter of fact, they even told me, they said, yeah, I know, we know about the annexation, but since it was not already in place, we can't count it as a valuation. They might have written about it. So let me just ask you this, though. It's my understanding DOT has already deposited funds for the right-of-way, is that correct? So yes. have you sent a written response to DOT saying, yes, we accept your price? I have, owned, I have said we are not challenging your price. We need to work out the pond div issue. Because if we can't work out the pond issue, then it changes a lot of things. All right. So you're saying here publicly that you're, you've accepted the DOT price? I, am not, I have not accepted their offer because the offer includes more than just the purchased right away it includes easements for the ponds. And I want the ability to be able to manage those ponds similar to the way county has done with other joint developments. I'm not asking for something the county hasn't done before. Well, so that's just another reason why this annexation should have been put on hold till these issues have been resolved. And so again, I, I just think this was rushed. Um, is there any reason why this had to be done on August 28th? Well, it's voluntary, and I guess I could say I wanted it done then, because that's when I wanted to volunteer it. You know, this whole process started when the county and the DOT said, we're going to build roads through here. I didn't build those roads. They're going to build them. My alternative there is large lot subdivisions, which doesn't, doesn't do well with water and sewer. Matter of fact, I'm not, I'm not even sure you can get sewer. So it's probably septic tanks. So there's a better option. So we began to explore it. And this was one of the solutions we came. You know, this whole process, the messaging from the county has been very combative and very contradictory. And on one hand, we ask for, uh, the county says, well, we'll be cooperative. We don't want to interfere. But then we read letters and listen to P&Z presentations that are totally opposite. They give us all the reasons why we can't do this. Sometimes it doesn't really matter as much what you say, it's how you say it. Okay. And the whole feedback that we were getting was negative. So it's hard to sit down with people when it's being contradictory. Well, Sebastian has a good plan here. County didn't really have a plan. County's plan is five-acre ranchettes. County had a comp plan that needed commercial, needed residential. It worked into our long-term plans. That's why we were pushing this thing through. And it, I don't think pushing it. It was voluntary. That's why we thought it was a good time to do it. Building roads, it's time to do something. 
We're doing a water project. Good time to get that done too. Trying to get some production out of land that's been sitting there because it's hurt from the citrus canker and greening. So those are the reasons. It wasn't some reason that I thought of, oh, well, here comes F dot down the road. I'm going to take advantage of this situation. I know you brought that up in an MPO meeting, and that's just not true. It's not true. Well, then let's just say I find the timing very coincidental because this 82nd Avenue has been a priority for the MPO for the last several years. And so it's, it's not like it's a big it surprise all back, or it goes confusion all back to anybody. To 2001. It's been on again, off again, on again, off again. So you don't ever know when it's going to really get done. I so hope it's on this time. It's the same it's on five ten. DOT is taking it over and, and acquiring right away. So yeah. Well, yeah, they have. They acquired mine. They haven't acquired anybody else's. So, Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd like to add that there was some discussion with with the city manager earlier about the five ten right of way, and he said that he asked for the right of way to be dedicated. So. Um, if, if that's if that's correct, I just it may, maybe Mr. Bass knows what the answer to that question was. That, that's not how I understood it. I, I thought he's, when he's talking about the right of way, he said that Sebastian can ask for it upon development of the property. I'm talking about the 67 acre parcel here. Okay. So <coughs> why don't we let Mr. Bass finish up with whatever he wants to say, and then to other issues. My point is, I, I didn't get up here to argue. I think this is a this is a good thing for both the county and Sebastian. And there was some communication that was terrible. I think we can all agree on that. I know I made a lot of attempts to communicate with people. I don't know why that didn't happen. It just didn't. I think the good thing is we're talking now. I would hate to see us go through this precursor to a legal proceeding. We got 10 days. Let's sit down and talk. I think we can work it out. I, I, I would like to see us have a message to the rest of the communities around us that we're open for business, that we're not constantly fighting each other. It seems like every time the county does something or someone wants to do a little something progressive, it gets chopped down. This is not a bad thing. It's a win-win. The county's water and sewer the est our estimate is $17 million in impact fees. You can do a lot with $17 million. And the property taxes. Property taxes are going to go up, I don't know, fivefold, tenfold. I mean, use Mr. O'Brien's math. The county gets the lion's share of that, not the city. The city's got to provide the police services. We've got things in our plan. Because it's a PD, it can't develop without school sites. It can't develop without water and sewer. We recognize, just like every other development in the county, that we have to pay to bring those services to our site. We've never said otherwise. But a lot, were, a lot of people were led to believe that, that we were asking for septic tanks. I don't know where that came from. But I would just like to see us stop fighting over this. Let's sit down and work it out. I'm available. I think Sebastian's staff's available. Mr. Brown, county attorney, tell us when. We'll sit down with you. If it's those matters that you brought up about the water and sewer, that language, language is only in there because the statements that were made by the city, I mean the county, that implied water and sewer services would not be available. We wouldn't even have put it in there. So it's not our intention to go against that agreement. And as far as water, we have plenty of water in our own consumptive use permits. We have over 3 million gallons a day. This project only ca calls for one. So I, my message is, let's stop. We're bringing up a lot of stuff from the past. It's a good deal for both of us. Let's sit down for a few days and see if we can work it out. I believe he said he had, we have 10 days before you have to file this agreement. Well, give us 10 days. That's my message. Thank you very much, Mr. Bass. Anyone else from the public wishes to speak? Your name and address the record, please. Uh, Joseph Paladin. I'm the president of Black Swan Consulting. Today I'm speaking to you as a member of the Indian River Neighborhood Association and a member of the board, of the advisory board. As I spoke at the city uh, Sebastian Council meeting, I'm not here to speak to stop 
the annexation with Sebastian and the county. Uh, I'm not here to dictate to the city of Sebastian how this should grow. We are interested in the outcome of this annexation, how it goes form forward, and some of the process that it takes going forward. You take, for instance, when Bellsmere did the annexation with Corrigan, uh, that annex annexation agreement we approved of. If we had a similar agreement with Sebastian in the county, it'd be a lot easier to swallow it and accept it. There's just not enough information there. And I don't feel there's enough planning there for this annexation to go forward intelligently. And we'd like to see that density, intensity, level of service, comp plan, comp plan amendments. And we'd like to see more information on that in this agreement before we could stand up as a board. So as a member of the uh, IRNA advisory board, we support the county in this position. And as far as Gray's brothers doing the annexation, listen, this makes all the sense in the world. And, and going along with what Commissioner O'Brien said, uh, not getting into the legal aspects of the, of the zoning and what have you, but just broadly. I own 1,100 acres outside the ur urban service area in Indian River County. Okay. I own 1,100 acres in the city limits of Sebastian. Without doing anything more, I've created a great deal of value for me. It's just that simple. So going beyond some of the technical stuff that Commissioner O'Brien brought up and Commissioner Solari brought up at the, at the MPO meeting, that general statement tells you a lot. Makes good sense for the Graves Brothers. So like I said, I'm not here to try and stop annexation. We are interested in having some input with this annexation going forward like we did with the annexation between Felsmere and Corrigan Brothers. If we saw references to that and more information on, on paper in black and white, it would be a lot easier to understand where this is going. But the annexation agreement they have with Sebastian, which was thrown together at the last minute, basically, doesn't tell us any of that. It's very broad and it's very unclear. So I would say our recommendation is the RNA. I'd like to see this thing slow down. I'd like to see better communications between the city of Sebastian and the county and the landowner. I think you need to open up that line of communications and get those points clear so commission, the commissioners are comfortable with this annexation going forward. And I don't think you're comfortable, and the RNA is not comfortable with it at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Good, that either one is right. That one's great. Name and address to the record, please. Sure. Uh, Donna Halloran, uh, 925 Greenbrier Avenue, Sebastian, Florida. Uh, first, on behalf of uh, the Indian River County Clean Water Coalition, um, I want to uh, commend and I also want to support the Indian River County Commissioners, uh, Mr. Dylan Reingold and Mr. Brown for their work and actions regarding the uh, Graves Brother Sebastian Annex process. Um, we certainly want to continue to work closely with you guys. On my own behalf, as a uh, personal, uh, on my personal note I should say, uh, as a resident of Indian River County and of the city of Sebastian, I would like it noted how embarrassed I am with the process that this has taken. The, the Sebastian City Council's behavior regarding the annexation process was a farce. Um, I know this is not the place to be discussing that, um, and, but I do want you to know I fully support the county's uh, position. I personally with others have filed a formal legal action suit. Um, I hope that we can get some resolution I as well, personally, as well as the Clean Water Coalition, no one is in, uh, does not want this to take place. We want it to just be taken place properly, and there has not been a pro proper process so far that we have seen. Um, we've never received any notification. Living in Sebastian, I did not receive any notification about the, um, other than seeing it in the newspaper, which a lot of people don't read um, or get, about the process taking place. Um, I have written letters. I did not receive any comments back from those to the city council. Um, so again, thank you very much for your um, assistance in this matter and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else from the public wish to speak on this issue? Good morning. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning. Ed Dodd, Sebastian City Council. I, I wasn't going to speak, but I, I I do want to ask a couple of things of you. I, uh, Commissioner Flesher mentioned the MPO meeting, and 
I'd like to kind of correct a little bit on that. When Commissioner O'Brien brought up at the MPO the information about the, um, about the potential impacts on the right-of-way for 82nd Avenue and 510, I, at that point in time, agreed that we needed to discuss that. That evening at the Sebastian City Council meeting, I went back and convinced the other council members to support us uh, having the Planning and Zoning Commission table an already noticed hearing on the uh, future land use map so that we could discuss that without that being an impact on that. Uh, that action was taken as a result of the information from Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, I did do a lot of research on that and I came to the conclusion and quite frankly, I. I not heard anything from anybody that says that the that that's that it's different that the actual location of the ponds was the real issue on the right-of-way issues on 82nd Avenue and 510 and that the reason it was an issue was that the county had refused to agree to the use of shared ponds now I understand that position has changed uh, and I applaud that because I think that'll clean up the right-of-way issues for 82nd Avenue and 510 so we did respond at the MPO it wasn't that we did not respond to the MPO information when it took place. Uh, I'd like to ask you to do three things if we can do this. Uh, I'd like for you to approve uh, the water farm that's been requested, that's been agreed to by St. John's Water Management District, that's now at the county offices for approval. It's been there for like four or five months. I don't know whether it is in your process. You may have not gotten to that yet. That would add approximately 200 acres to the, um, of the 1,100 acres to the uh, protection area for the St. John's, I mean, for the uh, water management district, uh, not the water management district, but for the, the St. Sebastian River district. I'd like to ask you to, to finalize and approve the shared pond issue, which should clean up those right-of-ways. And then I, would, uh, I, I will tell you the reason that in that agreement was the information about the water and sewer was that our land development code does not allow any development whatsoever without being on a standardized, centralized water and sewer system. The applicant knows that he can't build a single building on that property until it's on a centralized system. And since we were told that he was told that the county was not gonna provide him access to that, then in that agreement, we had to address that because we, we that's in our land development code that he can't do it without that. So it was put in the land develop in the agreement for the way it was for that reason. Uh, I would like to see the negotiation take place between the county. Uh, I'm sure that there's something that the applicant has that would help the county uh, in response to that. And that negotiation, I think, would solve that problem. Uh, I don't think the city of Sebastian has any issue with modifying that agreement. And I don't think the owner has any issue with modifying that agreement to, to satisfy those, uh, those issues. So. Those three things, I think, would clean up a large amount of this. Um, the stuff that came up at the MPO, it, it was listened to. There was a lot of discussion back at Sebastian about the items that came up. Uh, I, I just don't think that, uh, I don't think that anybody that wants us not to annex and not to develop that property is gonna get what they want. That's just not gonna happen. Uh, it's not reasonable to expect us to not do this. Uh, it's not unreasonable to expect uh, some communication to take place on that. And I will tell you, the process that we follow with annexation was followed. There was notification sent out. We had meetings, uh, we, we had a pre-meeting on this three months before the 28th. So there was, there wasn't, it wasn't like everybody's hiding this thing to, uh, the popularist rhetoric right now on, re is the, the rhetoric on this is, for example, when I went back and asked the council to, to direct the Plains Zoning Commission to table their hearing, which the reason for doing that was it was properly noticed already, we had to table it as opposed to cancel it, was uh, the very first thing was social media lit up with the fact that we were trying to hide something because we were tabling that. Nobody even talked about the fact that we tabled that as a result of an, a request from a county commissioner for us to look at uh, the impact it might have on those right-of-way issues. Uh, the, the populist rhetoric that's going on during our, uh, right now during a very contentious election cycle in Sebastian is all about how we've forced this through and we've not done it the right way. We've done this the way we've done every annexation we've ever done. There is, there's been nothing done mysterious on this. There's been nothing done. There was conversations with the county departments. We actually changed our documents related to information that came back from the county development department. Uh, that's, that's all documented that we did that. So there was not, there hasn't been anything done to try to hide or to sneak this through as it's coming across that we've done that. We have not done that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. 
uh, Councilman Dodd, um, it, if I hope I didn't give you the impression that I suggested that that's what you did, because that's not what was done. And publicly, during the meeting, you actually said that it was a reasonable request, and you'll take it back to the council. It was not you who made that statement. I was I left it as a blanket statement, but I'll say that Councilman uh, Bob McPartland said that we're early on, well, when there's two reads, you're 50% into it because you already had one, and that was the only point. It wasn't the fact that you didn't, you ignored it because you did take action, you did discuss it with council, but, uh, and, and uh, again, you did say that that was a reasonable request about the right of way. Uh, I was sitting right next to you. But in the meantime, the statement about we're early on on this didn't bode too well when you were halfway through the process. I, I didn't. And, and that, that was the only reason for the comment. It, was, it had nothing to do with your action, your personal action, and yes, you did take it back to the base. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wish to speak on this? There being none, oh, one more. Name and address to the record, please. Thank you. Um, good morning. For the record, I'm Carter Taylor, 2235 Silver Sands Court in New River County. And I'm a board member of the Clean Water Coalition um, and past president of the Indian River Neighborhood Association. I want to thank you for the generous, for the generosity that you show the public in the time of public comment. This body, possibly more than any other in our community, understands the value of public comment and bringing forth knowledge, engaging public sentiment. And I wish all the jurisdictions in our community would follow the exemplary standards set by this body with respect to public involvement in the government. Um, you probably know me as a community activist, IRNA, and all that, but um, I'm also an expert in geospatial analysis, and um, I've been involved in some high-profile cases um, requiring, at the core of the case, geospatial analysis, including um, working for the Attorney General of the State of Georgia and um, working with Attorney A. Lee Parks in a case that ended up in the U.S. Supreme Court that resulted in the invalidation of federal voting districts in nine states. So I can claim some expertise in my past uh, to support this proposed agenda item. I believe the city of Sebastian has engaged with Graves Brothers to construct a series of annexations with the effect of frustrating the legislative intent of the contiguity provisions of municipal statute, of the municipal statute. The end result, regardless of the steps carefully taken to get there, is constructively an annexation to the city of Sebastian that fails the reasonableness standards established by statute in the appeals court. In addition, it's easy to see that Graves has carefully held back the annexation of additional acreage it owns or controls, which otherwise, if included, would trigger new town provisions in the county's comp plan. In my opinion, this has been rushed through the S Sebastian City Council, not just to increase the cost of the right of way, which eventually would be borne by taxpayers, but in order to entitle land use that will no longer be available to the owners under the forthcoming revisions to the city's harmonized comp plan. The result is that the involvement of stakeholders is required in the city's comp plan has been short-circuited, as has been mentioned here. All that said, there's a lot more involved in this matter. This is a clear breakout from and challenge to the urban services area. Um, this is, if this is allowed to stand, there will be irresistible pressure to extend urban services elsewhere, particularly to areas contiguous to the subject that are not as yet part of the annexation series that I mentioned. And we don't know ultimately what their plans are because they haven't been discussed. Ultimately in play though is some 5,000 acres owned by four to five landowners, Graves being one, that extend from Route 510 all the way down to the long envisioned extension of 53rd Street and interchange with I-95. So that's the larger picture, and this is the beginning, I believe, of that process. So you have a very narrow technical argument in the contiguity, which you can pursue, but the larger picture, um, we need cooperation between our local governments 
to serve the public. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Anybody else from the public? Please. Yes, just, just a couple, if, if there's no one else from the public, just a couple of things. Um, I want to want to address a couple of things that have, that have been said. First was uh, Councilman Dodd asked about the county approving the water farm. Um, a few weeks back, we sent out uh, an email to St. John's that we were not requiring a permit for the uh, water farm that's planned for, for this property. So that has been done. So we're not saying there's any permit needed. So I wanted to get that out there. Um, on the joint use ponds, uh, we're in discussions with them, but we, we have some concerns. So I need to clarify that. That's been said a couple of times that that's resolved. We, I think we may have the seeds of a potential agreement, but we have some concerns about those shared use ponds because what, what that basically is, is you have the, the ponds that drain the roads and then they build a McDonald's and you have a combined pond. We've got concerns about it being responsible for what McDonald's or whoever, you know, drains, drains into that pond. Um, I think we can work through that, but it's not resolved. But I, I want to talk a little bit more about our concerns on the water and wastewater and what's, what's being said. County staff has no opposition to the annexation. I'll say that to anyone who will listen day in, day out. Um, I, it make, I understand why a landowner would want to do that. Um, and, and we're not looking to stand in the way of the city of Sebastian and their home rule authority to do that. What our concern is, is the, the, the first reading of, of the annexation basically said that the county was compelled to provide services. We, on a short notice, had to clarify that because we weren't notified of that June 26th first reading. We saw it on the agenda, so we sent out a quick letter stating our position on that. Um, we since uh, we, we did meet with city staff on this issue um, and then followed up with an August 8th letter from myself to the city manager, which is in the backup um, that talks about our concerns. This is beyond just the landowner paying impact fees to us or paying for their infrastructure. And, and this has been detailed here, but I feel it seems to have gotten lost. We've talked to city staff about it. Um, it's stated in the letter. There are limitations on our capacity. We currently have capacity for water and wastewater right now. We have concerns going down the road. Um, like Mr. Bass said, you know, we're looking ahead five, 10 years. We have to plan utility infrastructure for the long term. You can't say, oh, we're out of utility capacity. Let's go build something um, and we'll have it up and running in six months. It doesn't work that way. Um, we've got some concerns about um, some of the limitations are uh, demineralization concentrate. Well, what the heck is that, right? Well, so our water plants, we pull water out of the ground, they go through the RO process, we send some water to the customers, but then we have demineral demineralization concentrate that we have to dispose of. So it's a three to one ratio. For every three gallons we send out to, for people to turn their taps on, there's one gallon of demineralization concentrate we have to dispose of. So the North RO plant has a two million gallon a day limit. The way we dispose of our, 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 our and treat our demineralization concentrate is Spoonbill Marsh. We had asked when that project, when we were getting that permit, project permitted, we asked for three million gallons a day. We didn't get three million gallons a day. We got two million gallons a day. So there's a limitation on what can be produced at that plant, not based on what a CUP says or anything, uh, as far as the overall as the overall capacity, you, we've got limiting factors. So that's one of them. So one of the things we said on August 8th, we need to be able to do something with our demineralization concentrate. Um, we've also raised the same issue with reuse. Our wastewater plants, we've got capacity today. However, we're concerned about the long term. One of our limitations is what to do with reuse. So we said, you know, we would like something, we've, we've had discussions with others where, oh yeah, we'd be agreeable to taking reuse. I mentioned, I had discussions with the city manager and they said they'd be agreeable to that concept. There were some problems about the quantities that we wanted, something I think we could negotiate um, through this process. However, the changes that when the city's saying they address these things, they basically change the annexation agreement to say, yeah, they'll pay for, they'll pay their way, which could be interpreted as they'll pay their impact fees. Well, yeah, of course, um, but it's beyond that. We have limitations on our system. We've also made commitments to other areas in the unincorporated area that have already been entitled for development that I've got a concern um, that we could run out of capacity when this development moves forward. And so now we've got maybe potential landowners that were entitled um, that we don't have capacity for. 
And here's the next thing. Water and wastewater capacity is much more expensive than it used to be. If we've got to build additional water and wastewater capacity, it's going to be far more expensive than any of the plants we have. Okay? And when I say far more expensive, we did um, about 10 years ago, we did a, an expansion to our water plant for $27 million, and we did one for our, our central wastewater plant for $28 million. So that's cheap now. So my concern is that we would need to provide service to this development um, and have to build capacity, and we cannot, it, w it, it would be not good business for us to put our current ratepayers on the hook for having to pay more for that if we're not able to get that what we need. So then I'd also like, Scott, if you could put the, the, the slide up there. There was much, much discussion of the donut hole. So if you look, there's outside the urban service area, you know, we, we have the urban service area where we provide water and wastewater services. That's a fixed area. That's what we've planned for. That's what we've got infrastructure to do. We've got water plants. We've got wastewater plants. That's what we've been planning to do. My concern is we've already had the 67-acre annexation last year. That's fed to this 1,100-acre annexation. This whole area outside the urban service area, we had not planned. Um, my concern is the city of Sebastian's argument seems to be they could annex that entire place and we've got to provide uh, water and wastewater service. So we lose the ability to plan our infrastructure and are, are put on the back foot with trying to figure out who and what we're going to serve when and where. So I'll go back to the DOT letter. They were talking about roads, but I think we need to have a, a comprehensive discussion with the city of Sebastian about do they plan future annex? I've heard there's discussions with other people about annexations. I don't know. I don't know what their plans are. It would seem like maybe a, a some kind of discussion of what they are expecting of the county, something other than we'll sue you if you don't provide all of the, the water and wastewater services um, to, to these areas. But uh, I'll read it again. The city... The city consider the degree to which it will annex future properties and engage in planning activities to determine the extent to which the area can develop in order to assess the infrastructure needs of the development. So I think that is the larger question at hand here. And I'll say it again. We have no issue with the annexation. That's the city's right to do what it is. But when it impacts the county utility, that becomes a concern for us that we think needs to be addressed. I think we can have the discussion. I, I just think I, I recommend that you, that you approve uh, Dylan's recommendation to enter the process because that's how that process starts. The first step in that process, city managers get together, have meetings. If that part doesn't, uh, is, isn't fruitful, then you move forward with a meeting of, of the county, and county commission and the city council. So I, I think we need that framework. We've tried to discuss this um, and uh, we, we, we didn't have our concerns addressed. The city said they were addressed. I'm telling you, they were not addressed. Um, and, and there are things that, that can be a difference of opinion. That's fine. But I'm concerned about putting the utility, particularly, in a very bad position. Um, the road right-of-way stuff is, I think, some bad governance and more of an annoyance. But this water and wastewater utility issue is something that could threaten our utility system and impact our ratepayers negatively going forward. So that's why uh, I recommend that you move forward with, with staff's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Brown? Um, a couple in, in general. Um, the discussion of the pond came up, and I'm sure, you, or if you haven't, pull the language of the pond on 66th Avenue south of State Road 60 contemplated a lot of these same issues that you're looking at here. It also became part of the 66th Avenue and 60, that special node with the college and the land swap. Uh, there's a pond on the west side of 66, just south of 60, that covers a lot of aspects of reconfiguration, relocation, I think some responsibility sides. So not to reinvent the wheel, let's look at an agreement that we've already done within recent time frame. Um, how is, and then shifting onto the water and sewer, when the Corgan and FJV annexations went through, obviously Felsmer has its own water distribution network, right? And then on wastewater, how is that treated? Or how is that addressed? Do we serve it? Do they serve it? Do we bulk serve it? They distribute and collect? 
they, I'll, I'll let F Vinny fill in the details, but they, they have their own water and sewer system. We do have s about five customers that we serve along five on the east side of I-95, the racetrack, the tractor supply coming in the, in the Dairy Queen, a couple places like that. But um, the, 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 the city of Fellsmere has never made the argument that we're compelled to serve water and wastewater because there is no there is there is not a similar interlocal that there is with with city okay so it's a different type of interlocal arrangement they, they have their own water and sewer utility yes uh for the record vincent burke uh, director of utilities uh yeah we have a two hundred thousand gallon a day uh, emergency interconnect for a line that runs east west along the corridor from our um uh, 20 inch main that basically stops at 95 so if for some reason their plant goes down we can serve them water uh, they do not have any wastewater capacity, so we have a bulk agreement that we take all of their flows from their lift stations and then bring that onto our system for treatment. Okay. Um, and looking at, or uh, one more question probably that you could answer best. When we look going forward, obviously we know, we all know that the cost of new water and new wastewater treatment is much more ex expensive as it is today. But in all the studies that we've done, have we looked at What's inside the urban service area? And there's different densities you can apply. Just because it's zone six, you don't multiply it by six. I know some people like to do that to create a doom and gloom scenario when it's usually 2.5 or 2. Point something that you end up getting when you're done. But if you, what I'm kind of getting at is how far out have we looked of where would our next plant be? Where would our next five million gallon a day water waste water come from and where would it be? And can we serve everything in the urban service line with the capacity that we have left? And if we don't, we need to, in general, move up the discussion um, on the other, because you've got some groups that say septic to sewer, septic to sewer, which is a lot of that conversion still to be done in, inside of Sebastian. We've picked up some of the key parts, but there's still thousands of homes that are, that are on water, but maybe still on septic up there. So that's pending capacity, if you will. Um, so how, do we have any studies that go f out to say, look, here's where we really need to be looking at our next standalone RO and standalone wastewater plant to bring in another five or six million gallons a day? So the short answer is yes. Okay. We're currently looking at, we continue to look at that. We've done some master plan studies. They're a little bit outdated, but we're doing one right now. We're trying to look at our hydraulic analysis to update our models to make sure we have fire flow and ISO right. ratings, which you recall was done not too long ago. We also want to make sure that we're consistent with our comp plan, which says that we will build out uh, within the density set forth within the urban service area. So the reason why some of the issues come up today is because it was a foregone conclusion from some of those people sitting in the audience today that never reached out to the utilities director, that reached out to the comp plan people, reached out to everybody but the utilities director to have these conversations that we're just having right now. So the um, fact is that that never happened, and we did find out, obviously, for the first reading in June that that happened. Um, so with that being said, we uh, focus our efforts to have efficient build out within the urban service area. And one of the reasons why staff is concerned is because some of the stuff that Mr. Brown raised is outside the urban service area for the urban sprawl that we currently do not plan for or generate any studies for because we're concentrating our efforts within the urban service profile. Scott, if you can go back to that map that's shown on the, uh, the, the teleprompter. So regardless for the Felsmer annexation, which is uh, in and around 95, if you look at the purple areas all along uh, east of 95, including uh, Vero Lake Estates, uh, separating out the donut hole, you will notice that uh, the Indian River County service area, pretty much less the city of Vero Beach, uh, is serving about 10 million gallons a day, right? That's 140, 150,000 people. The annexation, based on its present max use analysis, which we're told by the city manager and others that it will never get to that point, represents one million gallon a day, or basically 10% of our entire service area, but is less than 4% uh, you know, of a footprint. So that's a pretty large consumption. So there's concerns that we have with respect to a tight density that's contemplated within that particular area. So going back to your question, Commissioner, we are looking at not only uh, the build outs for those areas, but also the existing capacity that has been built for those folks that are within the urban service area. But certainly we have to make sure that we look at obviously all of the alternatives with respect to additional future growth that may or may not happen out in the Felsmere area. We did have conversations with FJV about six years ago to have a master plan so that they could adequately prepare whether or not there's going to be a plan out west. 
Uh, and I don't know if they've actually moved forward with Corrigan's FJV to be able to do that. But certainly one of the concerns we had with that issue and with this issue is that we do not want to overextend uh, the capacity and the financial strength of the utility system that has been based on good, tight uh, economics for the build out that may serve other folks. Certainly if there's going to be anybody to serve that, uh, you're looking at the best utility in the county to be able to do that. We have a great bunch of people and staff to be able to do that. But we want to make sure that we start today, even if the build out is not for five to eight or 10 years down the road because of the capacity issues, the transmission, and some of the reclaimed water issues that Mr. Brown had, had spoke of. So you may recall that the board had authorized a reclaimed water master plan agree, uh, to be looked at. We're certainly working with a uh, continuing services engineer for that so we can make sure that we have capacity and we have uh, potential areas to be uh, served not only now but in the future, 5, 10, 15 years out, but certainly as the population continues to grow, I keep hearing 800 to 1,000 people moving to Florida per day. We need to be ready not only from the water side, but on the, on the wastewater side with respect to some of those issues. So again, the short answer is yes, we're looking at those, not only from the water production side, but also from the treatment uh, and disposal on the, on the reclaimed water side. And then if, you, if, if somebody said today, we want to move forward with siting a location, getting the permits and constructing, how many years is that window of time? Uh, it depends on financing, it depends on a willing landowner, but you're looking at anywhere from three to seven years out, depending on preliminary design work, uh, obviously engineering plans, permitting that has to go through. Typically there's uh, um, uh, regulations set forth in Florida uh, uh, statutes and Florida Administrative Code that says if you reach a certain capacity, you already have to begin that work and you have to be able to include that uh, for the department's review. So we are not yet at that because we not have tripped that threshold from a capacity standpoint but certainly there's other utilities that are looking like that because they're at or close to uh, the 75%, which is really the, the threshold where you have to begin that work of siting, doing the preliminary design, getting your financing together, going after grants or other financing sources, which in some cases might be debt service uh, serviced by those ratepayers. It has to be, whether if it's a bond issue, you have to pledge those revenues over 10, 15, 20, 30 year time period. So there's uh, a few different uh, things that need to be considered, but it's certainly, as Jason said, not a six month process. No. Yeah, no, more, more close to five. five or six, and, and in this ever-increasing regulatory world, everybody has the not in my backyard, so you have to be cognizant of, obviously, odor control and some other stuff and siting and aesthetics, so finding an ideal location sometimes is more difficult, uh, than obviously, than the other in, in today's world. Yeah, yeah. And, and Vinny said it, but I'm going to say it again for emphasis. Um, I, I don't relish the thought of us having to try to s determine a site for a future wastewater plant where there isn't one today. That would be a very challenging process. Any other questions, Commissioner? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions by commissioners? Well, it's time for us to discuss the issue. Commissioner Flesher. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I wanted to ask Councilor, um, I realize we don't, we don't have another meeting uh, in the month of uh, October. And um, if, if what was suggested today, if you were to have a meeting tomorrow, uh, which I know everybody would be eager to do, uh, if you were to have that meeting uh, and uh, a, a series of meetings this week, would that convolute any, any issue if we were to have a special call meeting to initiate the opportunity that you're suggesting today? Would it divert? Would it uh, so cause any alarm, concern? I, I will start with saying, obviously, I'm, I'm happy to try to find time in my calendar to meet with the folks from the city of Sebastian, the landowner, to meet this week. I will tell you that next week, we have a case called Ocean Concrete, George Mabe versus Indian River County. And 12 years ago, the city of Sebastian and other residents from Indian River County begged this, this commission not to allow uh, or to actually remove concrete batch plants from the industrial light zoning district, which has led to this case that has gone on forever and ever. And now we go to go to trial next week. Um, so just, 12 years back, certainly there are things we've done to help Sebastian. This is one of the hits that this board has to take. I'm va vaguely familiar with yeah. the case. And so the issue for me that I'm a little bit offended up on the day I sat with, not obviously with my board, but with comments from the audience is, well, now that we've put you, Mr. Rheingold, in a time 
frame problem, will you quickly kind of rearrange your schedule? Will you quickly meet with us when what Mr. Brown and I had asked for weeks was, could you postpone the August 28th meeting? Give us a chance to talk these issues through so we don't end up in this box. And so up on the dais, I'm happy to say to this board, I will meet with anyone whenever this week, but I can tell you next week is we are, I am in trial all week. The antithesis to the question is, if we initiate today, what is the time frame you have to have those discussions? You went right where we needed to go. Yeah, and so if we initiate today, you know, we will work on setting a meeting um, and the parties can deviate from the time frame that's set forth in the statute if we mutually agree. As I think Mr. Brown was stating, I'm happy to have one meeting, two meetings, three meetings, several meetings, um, much as like we did on the fire marshal issue where I thought Mr. Brown and Tad, uh, Chief Stone and I had very successful meetings and I, and I thank Paul Carlisle and Jim Stokes for, for getting together, sitting down, hashing out the issues and then bringing back an agreement to this board. Um, so I certainly open for getting that process going as soon as possible so we could certainly resolve these issues as soon as possible. And is there a time constraint on that? In other words, uh, are you limited to 30 days of discussion before you have to go to the next level? Well, Dylan's looking that up. I just want to mention the Sebastian fire marshal issue where we, we went through that process and we avoided litigation through that process. And I'll, and, and I'll say, you know, while we're talking about things that we did for Sebastian, I would say Sebastian largely got their way on that and that was after some challenging discussions. Um, so I think the process has worked for us in the past and to the benefit, I think, of, of, of all parties. Well, you might so have, under you might the have statute. You preempted the next question, but go ahead. Oh, just oh, so I can oh, interject now, next week is a FAC conference. I know at least a couple of the commissioners will be there. So, you know, I, I an idea of a special call I don't think flies. And then. This process does start with staff negotiations, which is so I, I see I no want reason the public to, to know the position we're in, Commissioner. Okay, well, so I will say once we initiate, the meeting shall be scheduled to occur within 30 days of receipt of the letter initiating the conflict resolution process. So once they receive the letter, once, um, once they have the letter, then we've got 30 days to set the, the first meeting between the county administrator and the city manager. And, so, and Jason already suggested that uh, as far as uh, the last time that we were in this position, it actually averted any, any type of suit or, or further complication that negotiation discussion was uh, most beneficial. Um, so with that, we are, we're in a position where we must act to have the discussion and not just say we'll have a discussion because there's no other alternative at this point. Safe to say, Councillor? I would and, agree. I would and agree. with that, I see an eagerness and, and willingness for the applicant and the city of Sebastian, and uh, we uh, want to uh, have that open line of communication and discussion, and I think we'll all be better off. So I'd like to move staff recommendation. We have a Motion for staff recommendation, second by Commissioner O'Brien. Anybody else wish to speak on this issue? Yes or sure. no? Sure. Okay. I had a few comments now that I threw my pen everywhere. <laughs> um, I've had many conversations on this annexation uh, with the public, with staff, with other elected officials, both in the city of Sebastian and in other jurisdictions. I've also spoken with the property owner. Through all of these conversations, there are several common themes. One, that this is Indian River County versus Sebastian or David versus Goliath or protection of our borders versus impacts on their borders. And whichever side you're on, the bottom line is that development's gonna happen. I don't think any of us up here have said otherwise. And to assume that it won't is irresponsible and unrealistic, and to say that the county is mad that this property has been annexed is a false statement. We've all said and we all agree that the municipalities are autonomous, <clears throat> and we respect their home rule power, 
However, like any large project, this one has impacts beyond its borders, and those impacts must be planned for and mitigated. The second overall theme is that this is the first of several annexations. Maybe it is and maybe it isn't, but either way, it's our responsibility as a county to ensure that under whatever jurisdiction, ours or someone else's, that infrastructure rules and responsibilities are clear and understood by all sides. The other thing is that this annexation is something the city and the property owner have been working on for a long time. While that may be true, the county and the city and the property owner have not been working on this for a long time. And even if you are of the opinion the county is not a party to the annexation, so does not need to be included in those conversations, the reality is the county is being asked to provide services, and in that role, everyone has an obligation to discuss how that is going to happen. I've heard nobody is talking to the city and nobody is talking to the county. Nobody is talking and everyone's mad at each other over miscommunications. This really is the overall overriding theme of this annexation. The time frame I've heard is an email exchange in February, a staff meeting in March or April, first reading in June, a staff meeting in July, administrator manager meeting in August, then PNZ and council approval. Whether that constitutes meaningful discussion depends on who you are, but it's obvious that there are issues on the table that need to be addressed, otherwise we would not be here today. We've heard that the city and the property owner want to address these issues and want to work things out, and I applaud that wholeheartedly, and in order to do that, meetings and discussions will have to happen. This is what everybody's saying. <clears throat> That's what this process is set up for. The 164 process is set up and designed and states clearly in its purpose and intent to resolve conflicts between governmental entities to the greatest extent possible without litigation. If we've had miscommunications in the past about who's meeting with who and what discussions are happening, this is the best process to ensure that those discussions have to happen and they do happen and that they will happen. So I do support this motion and thank you guys for making it and I do think that the 164 process has been mischaracterized as a process leading to a lawsuit. That is not at all what this process is. This is a process that requires us to communicate, which is what everybody says they wanna happen and will make happen and make sure that we can work these conflicts out. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Any last words, Commissioner Zork? Uh, just that as it goes forward, if, if this motion passes, um, I know Dylan's usually very good about letting us know when meetings take place, who's going to be participating, and then after the meeting gives us some type of summary. We just like to have, you know, a good transparent process for everybody. Um, and I think there's one thing I think I fully understand that as a PD in the annexation, there are no septic tanks. If it was developed as ranchettes, you probably would have had septic tanks. So. The, the campaign of 3,500 septic tanks, I think, is, well, is unfair and unwarranted. There will either be no development or there will be development on, on sewer. It's, it's not going to be a massive septic tank project that, that continues to be uh, portrayed. So um, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Great. Well, we've got a motion from Commissioner Fletcher, seconded by Commissioner O'Brien. My last words on this are simply that, as Mr. Bass said, the good thing is we are talking now, and I think that's a very positive event and something very, very good. For, for my, myself, I think the best way to continue the conversation is to support the motion, so I will be supporting the motion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much, and thank you, everyone, for being so good with this issue. We now move to a land swap with St. Lucie County, and I believe this is also going to be Mr. Reingold. Thank you very much. Um, there's a uh, property owner, I will attempt to say the name, which is Santirmas <laughs> Maiz. Dr. Oscar. Thank you. Right, right, um, right, right. So much more eloquently stated by the chair, Dr. Oscar owns a property on the east side of A1A that is a uh, Part of the property is located in St. Lucie County, part of the property is in Indian River County. Um, Dr. Oscar would like for the property to be entirely in Indian River County. That certainly would assist in any alleviating any concerns of conflicts between who services the property and the like. Uh, county staff has had initial discussions with St. Lucie County staff um, in order to make a boundary change equitable. 
um, county staff uh, would support St. Lucie County obtaining property that is on the west side of A1A, and I know that property is identified in the map in the backup. Uh, St. Lucie County has been in contact with the property owner of the property on the west side, and that property owner does appear to be supportive of the land swap. Additionally, I know Jason has reached out and had initial discussions with staff from the school board, Mosquito Control District, Hospital District, all the you know necessary taxing uh, districts here in Indian River County, and those district staff have expressed support of the uh, request. Um, any land swap would have to require approval of the Florida legislature through a general bill, and thus just the county attorney's office recommend the board support the land swap change and authorize staff to take any necessary steps uh, that would be needed to assist in the boundary change. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Thank you very much. Any Move questions? staff recommendation. Second. We have the motion from Commissioner O'Brien, second by Commissioner Adams. Any other discussion? Anybody from the Just, public? Um, our October 3rd joint meeting with St. Lucie and Martin, we we could have an opportunity to talk with them about this and yeah. as well, right? Yes, correct. And we also plan to present this to the local delegation right. on the 24th next week okay. um, as, as St. Lucie can, even though it's a general bill, they, they have requested that our delegation approve, approve this as well and take a vote on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 5-0. And with that, we are adjourned.